Michael Wargo, team pilot with Precision Aerobatics and Hobby King. Today, I'm going to discuss with you what I think is the most vital and critically important element of your 3D skills. And for me, I believe it's the thing that really uh, helped me get from one level to an entirely different level. And that is, I'm going to help you try and understand the role of the tail feathers, the rudder and the elevator, when you're rolling slowly. And also, you know, especially with rolling harriers and things like that. The reason this is so important is because, first of all, I would like you to learn how to begin to do slow rolling maneuvers, single rolling circles and single, uh, single rolling loops, uh, things of that nature. Long, slow rolls. They're very difficult. Um, making a single rolling circle is like making a circle with an Etch-a-Sketch in three dimensions. It's very difficult. You have to move all the controls simultaneously. It's something that is so rewarding when you uh, complete it and you actually can do it. But it really transforms your flying because it gives you an understanding of what's guiding the plane more than anything you've ever done. First of all, I try all the time to tell people when they're doing rolling harriers not to just use a cadence, not to throw the rudder back left and right. It's really all about control and really guiding the plane through every second of this maneuver. You have to learn and feel the effect of the rudder. The very first thing we're going to do when we roll right is to do a little left rudder. Okay? And so uh, when it's on knife edge like this, um, we have the nose at the same level, which is our goal. The problem is, at this level, when the wings just start, this is producing yaw. So what's going to happen is the plane, as it starts that rolling harrier, uh, most people know that the, the plane automatically rolls opposite of, of your direction of the rolling wings. So the reason is, this rudder comes in way too early. If you kick the rudder in early, the plane starts to, to yaw to the left before the nose goes up. Similarly, and uh, it, it makes a much bigger difference, is on a long, slow roll. <clears throat> as soon as you begin to roll, this, instead of staying straight, produces a little turn to the left. So that long, slow roll that you wanted to come straight down the runway is now pointing 10 degrees to the left. Today I'm going to use the simulator, which I've never done before, uh, to kind of illustrate this, uh, partly because it's, the weather hasn't been good for me to go out to the flying field, but I think it really helped uh, illustrate exactly how this stuff works. Now conversely, as you start to roll, and you get past this point where the plane is wanting to yaw, once you get to this point, you can fly straight because the rudder is just holding the nose up. And as you are starting to roll this way, you know, releasing the rudder and adding the opposite rudder is equally critical. And it's something you have to feel. I've been working on this since I started really focusing on it and I've never stopped. Um, I love doing uh, uh, really advanced single rolling maneuvers or maybe uh, like a, a tick-tock loop or something like that that requires so much adjustment along the way. But I think if you really start taking a look at how the plane is moving once you start making these adjustments, it's gonna improve your flying tremendously. Okay, a couple of things to understand. When the aircraft is going through a long roll, there are several adjustments you can make because the plane is gonna to wanna to move out of the line that you originally intend. Obviously, if you just roll the ailerons or roll them fast, the plane is gonna kinda of sorta of stay straight. The problem is the nose is gonna start coming down. So don't be too quick to get on the rudder because if you get on the rudder too quick, again, your, your line goes off. But the good news is as you're starting it, if you really understand how these things interact, remember when the plane is on its side, the elevator is doing exactly what the rudder was doing when it was level, okay? It will turn the aircraft. So if as you're moving, the rudder starts turning you this way, as you start rolling and get this way, a little bit of up elevator can right the ship, which is really important because the key to doing these maneuvers straight isn't necessarily nailing the surface exactly the way it's supposed to be. It's being able to watch and know what to adjust and how it feels to adjust. So 
as we're rolling through it, we watch. If the nose is going left, we pull a little elevator or relax the rudder a little bit for a second. Uh, if we're staying straight, you know, terrific. And make sure if it starts pulling this way, we understand that we have to, you know, the uh, elevator now is, is like a rudder. You gotta, gotta push it this way a little bit. What I was speaking of through this whole thing is basically watching the plane through the whole maneuver and get on the simulator or, or do it straight in front of you, flying away from yourself to just really watch what's going on and see if you can master through the first quarter turn to keep it exactly straight. And then try and, and, and do it through, uh, uh, you know, uh, 180. And then that turn it from, from uh, inverted to three quarters. And see if you can keep it straight, flying away from yourself where you can actually see every little part of the plane and watch what your inputs are doing. <clears throat> and then from there, I'm suggesting that you move to more complex things like that single rolling circle or single rolling loop because, um, again, it, it, it took so many flights to get it even close to correct and I, it, it's still so difficult for me. But like I said, it, it is one of the most crucially important skill sets to have. If you don't have it, you're missing a lot. The fact that you might be able to tumble or, you know, or roll the plane or do some rolling harriers and do a few in a row, it, it doesn't mean you've mastered it. I haven't mastered it. Maybe you never will. Maybe I never will. But the fact is, these single rolling, long, slow rolling maneuvers will help your flying more than anything you can ever do. What I'm trying to illustrate here is, as you can see, I'm kicking the rudder in early to start the roll. You see how early I kicked it in? You can see I'm already facing 90 degrees. And now with the other rudder, I am doing exactly the same thing. Watch the controls. I'm hitting it early. And the plane is, is yawing in that direction. Now, obviously, that's helping do a nice rolling circle like that, a rolling Harrier circle. Right here, I'd like you to watch. I'm trying to keep it straight. And I've dialed in... 20 miles per hour winds in order to help slow the plane down and exaggerate the uh, effect of the tail. But watch here as I'm trying to keep the plane very straight. Watch all of the adjustments I'm making to keep it online. As I'm rolling through it, I'm constantly adjusting a little bit to try and keep the line as straight as I possibly can. What ends up responsible for making this staying straight is as I'm rolling, I'm watching the nose and making little micro adjustments back and forth just to keep it straight. And I think with the heavy wind and the slow motion, you can kind of see what's going on. Here's another at normal speed with a very exaggerated headwind, but watch me struggle to keep it straight and watch all the adjustments on the tail feathers but ultimately the plane stays straight down the middle. Here's a great example of me show just a little slight miscalculation on the rudder and all of a sudden now I'm 10 degrees off to the left. And I'm not ashamed to admit it that pretty much everybody who's ever watched me fly consistently has seen me make this crazy mistake at just entering a, the rudder a little too early. And here it is the right way where I added the rudder appropriately, made slight adjustments, and kept the plane basically right down the runway, which is the way it's supposed to be. And this is full speed. Here we are again, uh, just another long, slow roll, and you're watching my adjustments as I'm going through the roll. Okay, here's one of the maneuvers I really like and have been talking about, and that is just a single rolling loop. Again, this isn't perfect. I'll never perfect it, I guess, but you can watch the maneuver and watch the controls change. It's a very beautiful maneuver and very difficult to do. Just like the single rolling loop, this single rolling circle is an incredible maneuver that really lets you feel the aircraft through the entire thing. As you can see, you know, through a quarter roll, through half, everything changes. And just watch the inputs. It's a really nice maneuver and certainly impressive. Here's another maneuver I'm really crazy about. Same principle. It's a figure eight with one roll on each side. So first a little right 
rudder and then quickly switching to left because I'm on that knife edge. And you can see the same principles apply, just really watching that tail and watching the nose and watching where the plane is going. It's very, very difficult and takes a lot of practice, but these maneuvers will change your life if you really want to fly aerobatics well. It will just turn you into a great pilot. Here are a few live examples. This is a very long slow roll, but of course this is a pattern ship and the thing flies like it's on a rail. But you can see how nice it looks. And here is, you know, intentionally turning a rolling Harrier to basically guide it where you want by kicking the rudder in a little bit early. And here I was making kind of a tight circle. This is all about using this techniques to guide the plane where you want it. And here I slowed it down. You can see some extreme adjustments because I'm missing the runway. I even turned back the other way to get it to land on the runway. I actually had to add up elevator in order to get it to kind of turn in that direction pretty sharply because I just didn't judge properly. You can see me using those techniques properly to literally find the center of the runway while rolling. Once you really get these techniques down, a lot is possible that you might not think is possible. Here is you know, that single rolling loop that I discussed earlier with the, you know, with the real plane. And it's a really pretty looking maneuver when you do it right. I thought this might be an interesting angle going straight at you. And watch where I just start to make it turn now because I want to turn it into in front of me. Now another little look at guiding it in a circular way to make a bit of a circle to guide it where I'd like it. Okay, I'll leave you with this. Of course, this is my pattern ship, but it is an eight point roll through about half of the loop. But look how beautiful the maneuver looks. And all the techniques I discussed is what's responsible for this plane staying straight and the geometry staying right through this maneuver. Very difficult, but very worthwhile.